This is Sean Plew from Hitterish.com. Today we're going to take a look at King Griffey Jr., some of his swing movements and what allowed him to be one of the very best hitters of all time. I want you to notice in this clip here how much tension he's able to create. And one of the things that everyone seems to notice about his swing is how efficient he is and how he looks like he's not trying. And I want to point out some of the movements in his swing and, and why that's the case, why he looks so efficient and why he's able to use his body so effectively. So let's take a look at this frame right here. I want you to notice how much stretch he's created between the upper and lower body. Look at his jersey. Look how, look how counter-rotated he is. Um, and you can see him falling into the swing, right? He's, he started to move forward. And his hands and his shoulders reach back for even more counter rotation, right? And he doesn't get, he doesn't tip the bat, and he doesn't get the momentum of the barrel that I like to see. But look at the way he uses his body, right? He's reaching out the back, the weight staying over the back leg. I'll show you some more of that in, in the next clips. But this is leaving your hands back. Look how twisted up he is. The lower body has pulled his swing through the baseball. This is how you stretch and fire. This is how it's done. He's a great example of how to use the kinetic chain and how to stretch and fire and how this works and how Ken Griffey Jr. was able to use this effect to his advantage. I want you to notice how much tension is, is created in this ruler and the snap of and the release of energy that can be created by using this kind of feel in your swing. This is exactly how Ken Griffey Jr. became Ken Griffey Jr. Take a look from the front view here. I want you to notice, again, the counter rotation, right? He counter rotates a little farther than most guys. What you'll see with most guys is the front shoulder is on the opposite middle infielder. His front shoulder is pretty much on the left fielder, right? The outfielder. So he's counter rotated more. And in this position right here, his hips are leading the movement, right? Even though the hips haven't turned, he's counter rotated and created this tension before ever having to turn the hips. So you see there's not really that much movement in the hips going on, but look how deep this swing is happening. Look at all the tension that's happening. Look how early he's behind the baseball. I mean, a lot of coaches talked about how he golfed the ball. You know, look how he squared up the ball so well at all times because he got on plane back in here and his swing was so deep. It's like, it's as if he's, he's powering up to hit the ball to the opposite field at all times, right? He's created so much tension as he falls forward and into the baseball. Look, watch him fall forward. The front foot's moving forward and he's pulling back. He's reaching back for more as that happens. Reaching back, reaching back. And look how late he's fallen into here. His front shoulder still, his shoulders still haven't turned. His hands are still back all the way at this point in the swing. And finally, he releases all that energy into the baseball. Of course it's easy. Look at him. It's because his use his body is so efficient with that move, with this stretch and fire mechanic and getting on plane really 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 nice movements this is something that isn't traditionally taught uh, to hitters um, Ted Williams talked about the hips leading the hands in, in his book the science fitting in 1971 uh, but you still have coaches here today <laughs> talking about throw the hands and, and uh, you know that's just not what Ken Griffey does that's that's not at all what's happening here Here's a side-by-side -side with Ryan Braun and Ken Griffey Jr. And I want you to notice the similarities in their swing movements. And with Braun, right, right, he's a smaller guy. He's able to produce 
the power that he does with these same movement patterns and these same feel. Um, now Braun holds the bat more vertical, which I like to see. But you can see how deep his elbow gets back in here, right? And these, these swings are taken from different angles. So they're pretty much in the same position with their upper body. Uh, maybe Griffey is a little bit more counter-rotated, but the same feel takes place. They're falling, they're keeping the shoulder closed, they're keeping the hands back, and the lower body leads the movement, pulls the upper body through, and you have this release of energy. So I wanted to show Braun because he's pound for pound one of the most efficient and powerful hitters there is today. Uh, and I want to show him next to Griffey, show how similar they are. This type of feel happens on every single swing, right? This tension, the hips are opening up, the elbow is staying back. This is the most tension you could possibly create in a swing. You see his hands are hidden back behind him. I mean, just looking at this compared to the hitters I normally look at, he clearly stretches more than anyone else, maybe ever, right? able to create what a lot of coaches would refer to as separation. The reason I don't like to call it that is because most coaches talk about pushing the hands back, pretty much towards the umpire, back behind them. And I like to talk about the hands pulling in or towards the dugout behind him. Um, and that's where you really get this feel of tension and, and this rotational load with the back leg and where you can really hide the hands back behind you like this. Um, and create more tension. So instead of loading back, load in or back towards the dugout behind you, pulling the elbow back towards the dugout behind you. Here's a clip from a home, home run derby. And people talked about how his, his swing was built for home runs. He didn't need to change anything, and that's mostly true. Um, And I really like the way he kind of falls into the baseball. So what's happening here, and this is very important, starts kind of narrow, right? And he's falling in towards the baseball, right? His, his hips are moving forward, everything's moving forward. But because his hands resist, right? Because he's kind of rotated like this, because he has this tension, the weight's not just falling to the front foot, right? As he moves out here, the weight's staying centered over the back leg while the hands pull back, while the elbows pull back. And that allows him to really keep the weight centered where it needs to be and shift as he swings the bat and not before he swings the bat. Uh, that's probably the most important thing I said in this video, so pay attention. Again, resists his forward momentum with the upper half, right? And that's really how you get this stretch and fire feel and really how you become adjustable to all pitch types and locations and off speed is being able to resist this forward momentum. Even though you're moving forward and you're shifting your weight into the baseball, you need to be able to resist with the upper half and control that weight shift as best you can. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel. This has been Sean Plew from Hitterish.com. Catch you next time.